This is WPTV. Welcome back to the desk. We're hitting the hardwood talking about the NBA with Steven, Tristan, Richard, and Philip. Now, guys, Toronto Raptors, to no one's surprise, the best team in the East. They had a big win this week against the 76ers. Philip, what's different about this team now compared to last year? Well, um, a big thing is, you know, the addition of Kawhi Leonard. But this team overall is the best team in the league right now. There's no, there's no argument. I mean, if you look at some of their team stats, as far as record goes, they have the best record in the league right now, sitting at 21-5. and five. Fantastic. The best start in franchise history, actually. They're third in offensive rating, seventh in defensive rating, only one of three teams to, to be top seven for both offensive and defensive rating. And they're also second in the league in net rating, beating their opponents by an average of about eight points per game. I mean, this team so far has been absolutely fantastic. The best team in the league, bar none. Richard, do you agree? Yeah, I like what the Raptors are doing. Uh, OG Adenubi, Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam, they've all come into their own very well. Uh, they matured over the time. Credit to Dwayne Casey for that. Um, I think yeah, they got everything. Everything's going well for them. Drake, Air Canada Center, tough place to play. <laughs> You, you gotta like the Raptors. Richard, are we going down the line with this? Or Tristan, I'm sorry. Are we going down the line with this? I, I mean, Kawhi Leonard is playing well. Kawhi Leonard on the, on the court when he's healthy is one of the best players in the league. I like how Richard mentioned Pascal Siakam. I think he's turning into a, a pretty Siakam solid a player. Beast. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Siakam <laughs> is an absolute beast. He's, he's taken over. The team is doing well. I just, I think history is going to repeat itself. I don't know if hey, they hey, can get the job done in the history, long run. History. History will repeat itself if it's the same thing. I mean, Nick, uh, so, uh, Ujiri uh, was asked about the Kawhi trade, and he said the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and, and not changing anything. And with DeMar DeRozan, that would have been the same thing. But now they have an entirely new, a superstar on the team, Kawhi Leonard, a former Finals MVP, two-time Defensive Player of the Year. This team is entirely different than it was last year, and especially now considering LeBron's moved out to L.A. Um, I think... Well, I don't know. <laughs> you, I mean, yeah, you add Kawhi Leonard, but, you know, you add Danny Green, okay, but it's still the same team. You still got the choke artist and Kyle Lowry. Oh, my God. Who I can't I'm perform tired. in the playoffs. It's a myth. Kyle, Kyle Lowry it's does always not been perform DeMar in the DeRozan. playoffs. Every year, it's always been DeMar DeRozan choking. Kyle no, Lowry, no. his numbers are pretty much the same every it's year It's always been the DeRozan playoffs. and Lowry choking for playing hero ball. But now they That's have a, a finals MVP. This guy's won a championship at, at his third season in the league. I don't know. Two times. Count two time defensive I would player still, of the year. I would still pick the Bucks and I would still pick the struggling Celtics the Bucks over the Raptors. Fantastic, right now. So I'll give you that. But no shot the Celtics in a seven game series at this point, how they're playing right now, have a chance of even touching the Raptors. They might steal one game, maybe at the TD Garden. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I see the Celtics are riding a four game win streak right now. They're riding Ky uh, Kyrie Irving. Gordon Hayward has been dropping like 20 to 30 points off the bench per game in that stretch. So I think, I think the Celtics are still the high favorite for that. All right, in any effort. Uh, another big game this week, the Thunder and the Nets. Paul George had an amazing, amazing. crazy game. Phil, take us through what happened in that game. Yeah, but Paul George... Uh just dominated the game in the fourth quarter. It was a great comeback. I mean, if we look at the highlights of the game in Brooklyn, is D'Angelo Russell uh, oh. definitely taking over since Karis LeVert went down, having a great season. That's the former MVP. But right here is Jared Allen, the young blood. Just in the first three quarters, he was killing it. I mean, OKC was the best defensive team in the league coming into this game, and they just had no way of stopping the Brooklyn offense. Surprisingly good, and there's Jared Allen yet again with a big poster alley oop over a former MVP in Russell Westbrook. But Look at that, the take, bro. the it's, it's, it's amazing, magical. it's amazing. But here's a guy who's averaging a triple double for the third straight season right now, Russell Westbrook. You gotta you gotta box him out. He's one of the best rebounders in the league at, at the guard position. Uh, that's in the third when the Thunder were down more than 20. But we cut it to the fourth, and you see the lead shrink right there because of that man, Paul George, with a big three, had a huge quarter just taking over. Another alley-oop right there. 25 points in the fourth quarter, setting the record for most points in a Barclays Center. No one's ever scored more than 47. And Paul George with a big man move, the wow. and one. No one couldn't stop him, except Spencer Dinwiddie was trying his hardest to stop this comeback. But unfortunately for... For the Brooklyn Nets, Paul George was still getting his buckets. Another big layup to put him within three points with just two minutes, or with one point, with two minutes left. And you look here, who else but Paul George? Ross Westbrook sets him up, pump fake, and that is the ball game. A huge three to win the game. Three seconds left. Brooklyn had a chance to tie, but did not get it. 
Paul George. Look, no one liked that more than Russell Westbrook. No one liked him more than Russell Westbrook. That was an amazing fourth quarter. 25 points in the fourth quarter, 47 and 15 for the game. A huge game for Paul George. Steven, take us through. What was the most uh, impressive thing about that fourth quarter? Um, you know, coming from a Nets fan, I, <laughs> that game was very stressful. Um, I didn't show it in the highlight, but, you know, watching Paul George take that final shot was really crazy. Like we said, 25 points for Paul George compared to 19 points for the Brooklyn Nets in that fourth quarter. Turnovers were really crazy. It was a really bad game for the Nets. They really could not buy a shot in that fourth quarter. It was literally just Paul George against all of them. Um, like I said, coming from a Nets fan, it's just really hard to watch that highlight. It was just really bad. You see, the, the interesting thing here is, though, that the Nets were in the game against the Thunder. I think that's really been yeah. the story of the season so far. A lot of teams really uh, playing up to their expectations and, you know, playing. It's been bizarre world, basically. Yeah. A lot of teams... Nets are always like that, too. Yeah. They, always, they always stay in the games and, and blow it. <laughs> <laughs> and Nets back. Riding an eight-game losing streak now. Nice. In that kind of uh, talk, guys, who do you think has been the most surprising team overall in the league, for, for better or for worse? Steve, we'll go with you. Um, I got to look at the Dallas Mavericks. You know, I can say Philip and Dante heard it from me back when we did the pre-draft show. I was show. with you. I was with you. Luka Doncic, guys, I was with is you. a stud. Averaging, you know, 18 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, shooting 44% from the field, leading all rookies right now. If he's not leading uh, for Rookie of the Year, then the only person I, I would give it to other than him is Jaron Jackson, who's on the Grizzlies. But uh, you also look at Dennis Smith Jr., you look at DeAndre Jordan, that team as a whole, guys. It's, they're 12-11, and 11, eighth seed in the West. They're doing well. I like that pick. I do. I'm a big Luka Doncic guy, but I, I'm thinking the Clippers so far. With They're starting off 16-8 and eight this season so far. As a team, they're shooting 47% from the field, 38 from three. Tobias Harris, Daniel Gallinari, Lou Williams, they're just they're doing well. It's great. Richard, how about you? I'm going with a sleeper pick here with the Pistons. Fourth best team in the East, 7-3 and three in their last 10. Uh, Blake Griffin is playing ba maybe the best basketball of his career, 25-9. and nine. Shooting the ball well from the field, 46%. And coach of the year in uh, Dwayne Casey. It's a shame what the Raptors did to him. You know, that, that's wrong. Coach of the year, best best season in franchise history. Come on. But Phil, we'll take him. Philip, you're stirring right now. Who we'll do take you have? Him. Well, I have the Nuggets. I mean, unlike you guys, sorry. Uh, unlike you guys, I picked a team that's actually going to matter in uh, April. <laughs> Band wagon. They're... Um, as far as... I mean, I thought they were going to be an amazing team, but the rest of the league didn't follow me. So I'm going to, I'm gonna you know strut a little bit with this pick because they have been the best team in the West. They have the best record in the West right now. Um, and everything is sustainable, too. They're, they're doing this without Michael Porter Jr., which was a top prospect in high school. Isaiah Thomas has not played a game yet. Will Barnes has played two games, went out with injury. They're the best team in the West. I mean, what, who's stopping the Nuggets? Do you have any Nikola Jokic stats for I do. Us? I do. <laughs> Every player to ever match Nikola Jokic in points, rebounds, assists, and win shares per 48 has been a four, has won an MVP. Jokic, I, I'm not going to make the connection. You guys could, you know... Connect the dots for yourself, but Jokic is he's, he's that guy. All right. That's it for basketball, but we'll be in the same arena as talking hockey right after the break. Don't go away.